A.V., I have a job for you. A client of mine is making an arms deal. He needs protection. It could get hot, very hot. The gun dealers on Maelstrom. Alas, nothing ever transpires as planned with them. You better gear up for this. Sovi, are you willing? Yeah, I'm in. Haywood. The whole street was my family. Neighbors helped each other out. Thought nothing of it. I am pleased to see you have not forgotten your roots. Born here, live here, die here. Childhood memories. Hopping buildings. Running away from badges. Iron taste of blood from a split lip. Oh, motherfucker! Got everybody fighting for a slice of the street. Get the fuck out of Vista. If you keep getting jumped, you find some stronger tubers. Do you want to spend the rest of your days blasting scabs? Or become a legend overnight? We have arrived. The Major. Ready to get your cherry bobbed? Yeah, come on! Childhood, let's see. Racing my bobber for the first time through the hills. <laughs> oh, and uh, first kiss in the middle of a synth cornfield. We nomads choose who to make our family. A choice forges strong bonds and a higher duty that stands solid as an old oak. My family's in pieces. That's why I'm headed for Night City. Makes you an outcast among outcasts. Miss this, you know? Comrade. I know. I saw it in your heart the first time we met. You know what I always liked about nomads? Your taste, no, hunger for freedom. Not easy to come by in that city. Corpse got their grubby claws and everything. have those reports you asked for. They were supposed to be ready yesterday. The world's going to tear us apart when the word gets around. The world's never going to find out. If I go down, you're going down with me! 
No! I'm not fucking joking! This isn't a request, V. But no way you're fucked, right? You're the one who fixes other people's shit. If you work in our soccer counter intel, you're always fucked. Today, they got you to zero somebody. Tomorrow, they'll get somebody else to zero you. What's the rules, Jack? You wanna be top? Gotta have some skin in the game. Yeah, but you're not on top. It's a borough where Asaka is. And you're the pendejo who keeps him there. Work for yourself, live for yourself. That's the only way. Plan simple. Do nothing odd. Don't get creative. You go in, snatch the cash, get out. And we sell the BD to those psycho freaks from the studio. Got it, got it. And remember, everything on full blast. They'll spot us extra for a wicked adrenaline high. Okay, on you go. Down! Everybody! On the ground! I want to see you kissing the flooring! Money! Now! Or I will fucking drop you, I swear to God! Well, yeah, hey... I, I, I... Now! Before I blow your fucking head off! Ah! Slow, deep breaths. Your cortisol and adrenaline spiked, but the soft activated your hormone blockers. Nothing happened. You're alive and well. That was... too much. Felt... I could feel the guy's... pain, his dress, his... hope. Hope wrapped up in something else. Mm-hmm. Probably took a booster just before. You'll be fine. Got everything set up? Let's switch over to editing mode. I'll sever the link to the BD Roller's sensory array. You'll be able to look around freely. All scenes yours. Full cam control in analysis mode, so move around, zoom in and out, whatever else you come up with. Think of it as your own little sandbox. So, analysis mode, you control playback can even pause when you feel the need. Then you use the editor console to unpause. Try it. Plan simple. Do nothing odd. Don't get creative. You go in, snatch the cash, get out. And we sell the BD to those psycho freaks from the studio. Got it, got it. Dream as hell, right? Well, that's not all. You can speed things up or rewind, whatever you like. Give it a try. Rewind. Roll it back to the top. Can I, can I? All good, neat. Now try fast forwarding a bit. Plan simple. Do nothing on the creative. Okay. You can also reset the recording. That'll take you right back to the beginning. Try it. Now for some fun. This here's why you came in the first place. In analysis mode, you get to view and even scan details of the enviro recorded by the BD roller. Focus on the heat, the gun this gonk gets from his buddy at the beginning. Now scan it. Plan simple. Do nothing odd. Don't get creative. You go in, snatch the cash, get out. Okay, right here. Excellent. Let's move on. Now heads up. In analysis mode, you can ferret out background noise and conversations if the roller got close enough. This tech records everything. Every little detail. Even the sights and sounds the roller was never aware of. To see the sources of the recorded sensory signals, switch to the audio layer in the editor. Go ahead and try that now. Okay, good. Now you should see several sound signatures in the store. Choose one and hone in on it. 
Pack of six, case of brosif, and a couple of zappers. Okay. We have a deal today on two flavors. Cuddy and uh, surf and Everybody! On the so, any thoughts? Unbelievable. Seriously. Like what's happening right next to me. Yeah, it's how BD recording implants work. They pick up everything, all the elements in the background. Then an editor tweaks them, makes them pop. Keep playing with the sound, explore it a bit. We'll move on when you get bored. Uh, what a see you kissing the flooring! Money! Never. Sometimes you can analyze extra layers in the raw. Stuff the rollers cyberware picked up. Like what? Ev's got Kiroshi optics that grab infrared. Meaning you should be able to grab heat signatures from her recording. Huh. <laughs> Hello nice. Scanning works on peeps, too. Walk up to the wounded chick. Try scanning her. Alright, next thing. Scroll forward to the part where our artist gets a lead injection. Oh, or I will fucking drop you, I swear to God! Well, I gotta take no! Fucking head off! See that? They shot him and he never saw it coming. But you will. Here it comes. My favorite part of the game. See the blinking thing over the entrance? Surveillance cam. Must have caught our shooter. You'll see in a sec. Cam feeds to the screen behind the clerk. Roll back to where the screen's in the kid's field of vision. Then scan it. His own chumba shot him. Probably planned to all along. Must have got a nice slice of cred on the black market for a BD like this. BD freaks are ready to pay a preem for a real flatline. Anyway, if you've seen enough, you can exit. Yeah, it's impressive, right? It's too bad most of the BDs we do here are only good for flogging the law and you can go there whenever you want. So as an example, if you actually do play the Nomad life path at the start and you are in the Badlands, you can even see Night City on the horizon. And we want to give you the option later in the game, if you want, you can just take your car and drive out of the city. You can go there whenever you want. Thing is, you might not want to because the Badlands can be a pretty dangerous place at first because time has not been very kind to the Badlands. There have been many wars in the past, there's global warming, so most people that do live out there don't really have another choice about it, or are nomads that love this life and are all about it and are very battle-hardened. We of course also want to tell their stories, because we want to tell many, many different stories throughout the cyberpunk genre, which means that you will also find missions that lead you out in the Badlands, or where you deal with the people living there. So Philip, can you tell us a little bit more about the character, Padre? He's the guy we see giving his business card to Street Kid V in the video. Who is this man? Yeah, so Padre is actually one of the fixers in Night City. And fixers are people that work as intermediaries. So if someone who has a lot of money needs a problem solved, they go to a fixer. And a fixer then finds people who can solve that problem. And these people are people like you, V, cyberpunks. Fixers are very territorial, so Padre specifically works from Haywood, which is where you as a street kid grew up in, so you already know him. Uh, the different types of guns that will be in the game. So we have three distinct types of guns in our game. We have power weapons, we have tech weapons, and we have smart weapons. Now, power weapons are the most similar to contemporary weapons. One thing they can do, which normal weapons cannot, is ricochet bullets off of surfaces. So you can hit somebody hiding behind cover or hiding behind a wall. Now, tech weapons, on the other hand, use electromagnetic power to propel a fully metal projectile to extreme velocities. What that allows them to do is to punch through cover or punch through walls to hit somebody who's not even aware that you're there. Smart weapons use guided missile technology to actually track targets in real time. So you can hit somebody who's dodging, running away from you, or you can hit somebody who's hiding behind cover. So Pavel, Cyberpunk doesn't just contain FPS elements, right? it's also a fully-fledged RPG. So can you tell us how you guys approached introducing those RPG elements into gunplay? 
So I can tell you one thing, Holly, it wasn't easy to merge those two elements <laughs> together. Now, uh, we've spent a considerable amount of time merging the RPG and FPP side of our game. What the player will experience is that V changes from a small-time mercenary to a legend in the world of Night City. V becomes more and more proficient in using weapons as the game progresses. So they will see that reload times become shorter, uh, the accuracy of your weapons grows, uh, you will have faster aiming time, you will move faster with your weapons, everything becomes more in your control and that gives you more opportunities to defeat the biggest encounters that we've designed for you. So I have prepared a few extra questions for you, Pavel, if you're feeling up to it. Of course. Okay, well the first is going to be, how do you find more weapons in Night City? Like, where will players be looking for them? So I expect the players to look everywhere for new and exciting weapons. You can, of course, buy weapons at vendor shops and they will house an entire catalog of weaponry that you can get. However, the best weapons that you can find will be taken from enemies or loot caches that we have everywhere in Night City. The weapons rarities range from common through uncommon up to rare and then legendary. And as they go in rarity, they actually climb in power. However, legendary weapons are very specific in such a way that they possess unique abilities that you will find on no other weapons in the game. The players will actually need to make some tough choices to find some legendary weapons because maybe they need to choose whether to kill a person who holds the legendary weapons that they want or to spare them because they like them as a character. So next question, let's talk about weapon modifications. What mods can people give to their weapons in Night City? So we have two types of modifications in the game. One of them would be modifications that we call attachments. So these would be scopes and silencers, and you can see them actually being attached to your weapon as you're playing the game. They give you statistics advantage and they give you more opportunities in gameplay. The other part of mods would be software mods. Now these are basically small chips that you install in, the, in your weapon and they actually change the statistics of the gun. They can give you damage, they can give you accuracy or they can give you more fire rate. Some of those mods actually change the gunplay on a more fundamental level so they can give you non-lethal rounds, biochemical rounds to tear through that armor even faster. So I suppose for my final question, uh, why don't you tell us about your favorite weapon then? Which is your favorite weapon so far in Night City? Oh, there are so many weapons that it's hard to choose just one, but I can mention some manufacturers with their weapons that I absolutely adore. The first manufacturer would be Tsunami Defense Systems, who produces the sniper rifle Nekomata. That's a tech sniper rifle. That means that it can pierce through walls. So it can actually hit somebody who's hiding behind cover or who doesn't even know you're there. Of course, I also like a close quarters approach. And what that needs is a shotgun. One of the shotguns that we have in the game is Budget Arms Carnage. Now that thing is cast from pure steel and it weighs a ton. However, you can cut a person clean in half with it. Another shotgun that I absolutely love, it's for a more refined approach, I would say, is a smart shotgun, Kang Tao Zhuo. That thing has eight barrels and that means it can track eight targets independently. Now, killing an entire room was never simpler. Uh, Pavel, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. Uh, I'm actually pretty interested to see what kind of weapons people discover when they uh, play cyberpunk for them. I love this town. The city of endless opportunity. Ready to get your cherry popped? Yeah, come on! City like any other. Just bigger. Nah, no, mano. Not just any other city. Legends are born here. The Major League. We're only here because Dex is pulling the strings. Doubt that puts us in the same league as them. But we are. They just don't know it yet. But if you got the cojones and you know how to use them, you can do damn near anything. Unless you catch a bullet. Even then, you go out with a bang, right? You know, you can make heaps more eddies as a motivational speaker. Yo, Mr. V, a pleasure. So what's the gig, Dex? You meant to come out in one piece? <laughs> 
<laughs> How about we go over the plan? There's this prototype tech, a biochip to be precise. Jobs to grab it. Guessing it belongs to a court. Mm hmm. Arasaka. We are robbing some heavy hitters. Thought you could blackmail me, fucker! High risk, high reward. First rule of the afterlife. Cut king, baby. Goes without saying, we do this on the hush. Ideally, no bodies. Not a one. Sounds simple enough. He's led, assholes! Is it gonna be dangerous? Don't you worry, my boy. We're bulletproof. Get your ass moving now! What the fuck just happened in there? Can't stop digging Night City. Fucking Matrix. Happy now, Jackie? Yep, I fucking hide! Time to bail! Oh my god, we're so fucked. Dix, what the fuck? Game risk it, V. And you, who are you? Ah! Fuck. Welcome to the gameplay demo walkthrough of CD Projekt Red's upcoming title, Cyberpunk 2077. A narrative-driven, open-world RPG set in a dark version of the future. Before we start, a small but important disclaimer. The gameplay you're about to see is from a work-in-progress version of the game. Everything you see is potentially subject to change. In Cyberpunk 2077, you can fully customize your character using a deep customization system. For this demo, we're going to play a female. Keep in mind that what you see here is not final. We just want to give you a glimpse of what will be possible in the released game. This is an RPG, so before we get into our appearance, we need to define our backstory. What you choose here will unlock different possibilities later in the game. Also, you can use an array of different options to modify how you look. These include body type, hairstyle, tattoos, makeup, skin tone, and many, many more. But visuals aren't everything. You'll also be able to customize your initial attribute setup. You'll notice we didn't pick a class. Cyberpunk 2077 features a fluid class system, and you'll be able to modify your class throughout the game. This demo takes place near the beginning of the game. V and her friend Jackie, along with a netrunner named Tiba, are hired to find and retrieve a missing person, a girl whose locator implant went dark. Always clear. Go. Cyberpunk 2077 is a first-person role-playing game. This perspective enables us to maximize your immersion. Should have full access in 2.8 seconds. Breached it. Your turn. What I lead the way, I know. Alarms neutralized. Is that her? Is that our target, V? Her room's too simple. Not our girl, I think. Keep looking. It looks like these scavengers are kidnapping people to harvest their implants. Okay, things are about to get heated. We'll take a reflex booster that temporarily allows us to use the Kereznikov ability. This is Kereznikov. He's 
That was trauma to you, blow. a kind of high-end premium medical insurance. Not much time from what Bug said. We've delivered the target, and Tiba has notified us that the scavengers have called in reinforcements. Let's get out of here before they arrive. I got the eddies for new wheels now. I had something real fine too. How about you, Aina? Probably blowing all on booze in three days. Talking about somebody else, Jack. People are moving a cunt out of combat. Cyberpunk is a mature, visceral experience, and as such, it will let you explore a variety of different interactions with the game world, and as you just saw, it's people. Hello, Night City. Your man standing here with us, teaching on all last night's biz. But first, remember the man, the myth, Johnny Silverhand. Been a year since he went on his last ride. All you gunks sitting in the afterlife, nursing that scotch, waiting for something better. You know what I mean. The so job was a success, and, you, and V obviously in. has some money to burn. Up, v. Look, I, I need to talk to you. That news is as big as my balls. And I got a hot date with my Ripper Doc. Come on, I now make the dock wait. Pull some pants on your culo and get down here. Subway entrance and bring your iron. Okay. Jackie has just told us that he has some big news for us. And we have an appointment with our Ripper Doc today. Before we leave, let's take a good look around our apartment. Good morning, Night City. The song on the radio is by rocker boy Johnny Silver. It's part of our creative process to draw inspiration from the pen and paper system created by Mike Pondsmith and to put our own 2077 spin on it. Let's go grab our gear. Okay, we'll take these trusty pistols and also grab our jacket. Since Cyberpunk 2077 is an RPG, the jacket not only provides us with protective stats like armor, but it also increases our street cred. Street cred is a form of experience the player acquires by completing side missions. It is used to unlock new vendors and content throughout Night City. All right, let's go meet Jack. V's current apartment is located inside a mega building, a huge building complex that forms a micro society of its own. In this timeline, technology in the world have evolved in some ways that seem familiar, but entirely surprising in others. As an example, in this world, people pay with eddies, slang for euro dollars. We make sure to root every detail in the world's lore, so everything has its purpose and stays believable. A big part of our RPG experience is having a world that is interactive. Here, a generic ad has morphed into an advertisement specifically tailored to V, informing her of the nearest vendor she can purchase the product. In this case, it shows us where to find some Nicola soda. Hmm. 
stages of deep correlation with regularly bioquality that even mother nature can only Try out our pressure mode of tank and let your tongue be amazed. This is Wilson, one of Night City's many gunsmiths. We won't be checking his wares soon, but you can purchase and upgrade your weapons and gear throughout the city. Cyberpunk 2077 is set in Night City, a bustling metropolis located on the coast of the free state of North California. It's a dystopian city where violence and oppression are the norm. We are working hard to make Night City a fully realized, seamless open world with no loading screens. Currently, we're in Watson, a former industrial district where crime now mixes with money. Very strong signal. You kidding me? Damn signal gonked out three times. Three times, yo! It's a piece of shit. Now give me back my eddies. Silverhand's debut out, Matt. Now I know ever since he has me. Could be some truth to that. We've greatly enhanced our crowd and community systems to create the most believable city in any open world game to date. The city's streets are bustling with crowds of people from all facets of life, all living their lives within a full day and night cycle. Okay, there's Jack. Fucking finally. Buckle up. Shit's happening. What's up, Jack? Dexter Deshaun. Huh? Sound familiar? Somebody wants to talk to you. One of Night City's top fixers, eh? Okay, you see that caddy? Need to walk on over there and get us a job, I know. <laughs> Fine, I'll meet him. Talk. I'll be a senior rippers. Good news to me. Good luck, V! It turns out we've caught the attention of one of Night City's biggest players, Dexter Deshaun. A fixer. A person who gets things done. He wants to meet up and discuss a job. Get in. Let's see what he has for us. Yo, Miss V. A pleasure. Let's roll. Scanning the serious job just now. Playing gargantuan compared to smashing up a scab home. You interested? Interested, sure. Tell me more. Well, glad to hear. Before we can start in on this, though, I need to be sure. Sure you all right. And the nature of this test. Slot in the show. See, got a classic tale for you. Psycho gang, just doing his thing, jumped a corp convoy, got away with gear. Now I need me that little combat bot. They call it the flathead. Of course, I got the Eddies to buy it, but me and the Maelstrom boys ain't the best of friends. No flow to our convo, see? Who's the woman? Corporal agent. She's on the hunt for the dogs who sold the Gangoon's info on the convoy. Got herself a prisoner. Her chief suspect, most likely. Going on 20 hours since the convoy was jumped, and she still don't have no guilty body. Gotta be desperate by now. Be wise to think how you could use that. Got any questions for me? Clear on it all, I think. Time I got to work. Beautiful. Here's hoping my inkling checks out. So, see you at the afterlife soon as the job's done. Do good, 
and this will be the start of a beautiful friendship based on heaps of eddies. It seems Dexter has given us a test of sorts to see if we're worthy. He wants us to retrieve a piece of high-tech combat gear, a local gang stole from the Militech Megacorp. We'll be able to approach this job from a variety of angles. Let's try calling the Militech contact to see where that leads. Hi, um, heard you were looking for some tech. Let's talk. Hey, everybody shut it! Where is it? Come on, spell! On the horn? No. Amateur hour, Jesus. First exit off Skyline going towards the NID. Storm Channel under the overpass. Meet you there. The situation's tricky because the contract giver is a corporate agent who seems a little high strung. Before we get down to business, it's a great idea to visit our Ripper Dock. Got a real whack tape, change your fucking life. Crime is a common occurrence. Night City is not a safe place. Life here is not easy. Your heart chakra looks a little out of whack, babe. V! I can release... How to play out with Dex? It's all here. All right. I'll check it out while I wait for you. V? Dr. Vector, we'll see you now. We're at a Ripper Doc clinic. Ripper Docs are specialist vendors who offer people the possibility to install or upgrade their cyberware. Vicky, as bright as ever, you old ripper. Need to bump up my specs and get a grip. <laughs> really? Now? Finally? Vic, shit just got real. Hitting the major leagues. Got a job from Dex Deshaun. The Dex Deshaun? Yeah, that is something. But let me guess. Hasn't paid you yet. Quick, Ryan, Vic. I'll bring you the Eddies later. With interest. You know I will. Last time, I swear. Now sit. That's Karoshi. Best I've got. And should be about right under the circumstances. Now jack in. You peruse and choose while I scan. Let's see what's going on inside. We're going to install both an optical scanner... Mark one, like I said. Decent enough scanner. Displays data on your cornea. And a subdermal weapon grip. Link's not labeled. And to be perfectly honest, not entirely sure where the hell I got it. Still, looks like it'll talk to Karoshi Tech. <sighs> I'm ready. Carve away. Okay, all clean. Now for the fun stuff. Lay that major league arm of yours right here. Just like that. Thanks. Now a bit of anesthetic, and I can start cutting. Feel anything? Doc. Play by play. Makes you sound like a dentist. You're always going on and on. Don't be me now. Remember, I'm old. I got a shaky Gannick hand. Could slip. Lights out for a minute, all right?
Good. So let's test it. I'm linking you in. You might feel a little discomfort. Maybe blurred vision, low contrast, glitches. So, how's it look to you? With the scanner, we can zoom in on things and take a closer look. This is fantastic. Beautiful. Time for the scanner. Additionally, we can analyze objects, get details on enemy weak points or gang affiliation. It might take you a while to adjust, but first time is rarely the charm with anything, really. The scanner should eventually sync with your thought processes and read your intentions. <laughs> it ought to work like a charm. Now draw your weapon. You should see your ammo count in a brand new sight. The subdermal weapon grip links to our scanner and shows us weapon information like ammo count and fire modes. It also increases the base damage on all connected weapons. Shit, Victor. Not bad. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Say you'll take this and remember the dosage. Two whiffs now and another two in an hour. Thanks again. You're the best, Vic. Go on, kid. Show him what you can do. And once you hit the big time, don't forget where you came from. While some Ripper docks operate legally, others provide black market services. For the right price, they can even offer to install illegal, military-grade cyberware. Left a few minutes ago. Said he'd wait outside. Well, well, Hiroshi. Mm -hmm. Well, Vic's got a soft spot for you, Heine. Come on, how about you use them fancy ass optics to scan my new wheels? Sure, but you'll have to let me take it for a spin. Hey, just watch the paint job. Hey, carnal! Hey, you got a problem? This guy looks an awful lot like one of those scavengers we took out earlier. Something tells me that wasn't no coincidence, huh? Jackie's car is a super-powered sports car running on Chew 2, the superfuel of the future. Players can explore Night City freely, in many different cars, on bikes, and in other types of vehicles. This does not look good. Puta madre! Grab the wheel, Jack! Oh, fuck! It looks like the scavengers from earlier are still angry. They're pulling ahead, Heine. Watch it now. Got it. All right. I think we got rid of him. That was intense. Ah, shit! The fuck was that? Night City never sleeps. Danger lurks around every corner, even in daytime. Random encounters like these are an example of how your actions directly influence your open world experience. Let's get the fuck out of here. Okay, Jackie. So, think they're done riding our asses? Scavs? Uh, sure, maybe. Should be looking for a new spot to slice and dice, not gunning after us. Who knows? Real messed up in there, Oscars. Saw it yourself.
Many forces are fighting for control of Night City, but the mega corporations are the real showroom. The agent we're going to meet represents Militech, one of the largest companies in the private military sector. Why are we stopping? Remember the corpo off Dex's shard? Ranger, she's in the area and we're gonna meet. Let me guess. She's in hot corpo water. Desperate. Then you think you can use that. See if I can, yeah. Since Cyberpunk 2077 is an RPG, Preparation will be key when dealing with Night City's powerful, especially when these are corpos. Instead of just rushing in, let's assess the situation with our freshly installed Kiroshi optical scanner. There, let's take a closer look. Composite armor, car's a fucking tank. Shit. Yeah, Militech, no doubt about it. You sure you still want to meet him? Yeah, gotta do this. But don't you move a damn muscle. Not unless I start, that is. These guys are levels higher than we are. Let's try to approach them carefully. Stout, take it you were the one to call? Yep. Wanted... You're smart. Thought you could blackmail me, bitch. Set conditions. Calm the hell down. What is I've this? I've got you now, asshole. You're insane. Who the fuck is this? I'll know in two seconds flat. That fucking thing ready? All set. Are you here alone? The corpos have hacked us through our personal link and have subjected Come us on. to a kind of lie detector program. The dialogue system in Cyberpunk 2077 is fully gameplay driven. I asked if you came alone. Yep, just little old me. She's lying. Search the area. Now listen, folks, we don't need to be here all day. This piece of shit, Anthony Gilchrist, did he or another asshole at Militech leak info to you or anyone else about a convoy? It might be tempting to reach for the gun, but the consequences could be dire. To do with him Remember, or these guys are really tough. Shit. Checks out. <laughs> you got nothing on me! Nothing! Won't get away with this, you bitch! You're dead! Somebody shut him up. Take me home! Now! All right. I have no idea who you're working for or what you even want, but you better give me something solid or I will end you. I've got an offer. Oh, you are stretching. This better be fucking good. Gang goons who ripped you off? I know where to find them. They got a bot I want. Give me the funds to buy that bot. You can do what you want with the gang. I don't give a shit about the thieves. I want my mold. Credship, 50k. Just enough to buy you your bot. Thing is, Chip's gotta make it into the thieves' terminal. That's all I need. Think you can do that? Then we got a deal. Fine. I'm in. Try to fuck me in any way, and I'll be seeing you real soon. You're making a mistake! This cunt's good as dead! And she'll take you down with her! The agent gave us the money to buy the bot we need from the gang. By choosing to call the Militech agent earlier, we have now opened up a non-violent path through this quest. Of course, we could try and keep the money, but that would mean we'd have to take the merchandise by force, which requires a lot of firepower. Looked a little fishy, you know? Poquito tense. No signal, so I stay put. Good thing, too. Went down about like I expected. Made a deal, and we're good to meet with Maelstrom now. Mm-hmm. Be there soon. What do you expect? 
Corpses don't forgive or forget. Even these Borg fucks sense that. Feel the pressure. That's why they're holed up in this shithole, praying to the almighty Trip Six. Gotta move the tech, but they can't. Cause your new best friend from the tripped out, tanked out SUV, is just begging them to try. How you want to do this? Even now, we can choose how to approach this quest. Do we go in guns blazing, or do we try to negotiate All right. for the bomb? Plan's simple. We pay with the corpo's cred and get out. I don't know, but you're calling this one. For this demo, let's try what, the more diplomatic approach. Uh, Tough shit. All we need's for them to buy it. <laughs> don't know you. Want to talk to Royce? Main room. I'm waiting. They look damn well prepared. All strapped with military gear. Psycho Borg scrummed out with military grade hardware worth millions. Should be the guys we're about to meet are dangerous. They are members of the Maelstrom gang and their obsession with body modification goes way beyond even this world's standards. On their path to becoming machines, they don't shy away from even the most extreme measures. Anti-personnel mine. Shrapnel's better. Hm, my favorite. Kangoon's getting creative with their gear. It looks like they made this abandoned all-foods meat factory their hideout. Charming. Another one? Seriously? Maybe we should have taken him by surprise. A little late for regress like that. Got us in their sights now. Just keep moving. Stay cool. They're just trying to spook us. Remember, we've chosen to buy the tech, not steal it. Hopefully this will go yeah, fast no, and easy. This is a pretty well-guarded place. You can imagine what would have happened if we'd taken the violent path. What? Looking to buy a bot. Model MTO D12. Looks like a spider. Couch planted. Yo, Kerr. Peek around the corner, see if we got anything like that. I'll stand. Can't move on your culo. Makes you an easy target. Sit down. That really necessary, hombre? I ain't your hombre. Sit. Sit your ass down before I plant a bullet in your skull. Jack, sit down. This ain't gonna end well, but... Shit. Well, all right. Fucking bravo. Come on. Lighten up. Have a whiff. Better. Now we can talk. The bot. Need to see it. Suit yourself. Fucking tricked out. State of the art this thing. Don't even got no standard port. Bells and whistles, though. Dynamic camo armor and motor impulses rival in that of the human nervous system. Its actuators are actually pimped with titanium fiber, and it can go anywhere. Literally. Watch this. Fully integrated link, too. So when the spider starts crawling up walls, dangling from ceilings, you could lose your lunch. So, what you think? Me up and let's get the fuck out of here. The bot. I'll take it. Two questions. What the fuck's going on? And who the fuck is this? Got 50 large on this crutching. And you positively reek of Militech. 
Dexter Deshawn sent me. Dexter Deshawn. Dreads. Gold plate. Fat old fuck! That him? <laughs> we'll pay for the bot and be on our way. How much you say you had? 50k? Preds on this. Move it. Woo! Not the smoothest of deals, but it worked out in the end, right? Flathead's good gear. It'll do the trick. Whatever that trick is. Shit. Shit, shit, shit! <laughs> It turns out the cred chip we got from the Militech agent contained a virus which off. fried their systems. The the trip Royce, their leader, is making a break for it. Had to end this way. Before we figure out a way to leave, let's grab the splinter that controls the bot from one of these dead maelstromers. The inspection system allows us to take a closer look at the splinter. You can inspect specific items to reveal details that can help in solving quests. Okay, let's equip the splinter to our chipware stone. With this done, the bot will now follow us wherever we go. All right, what else do we have here? Nice! A street-modified tech shotgun. Tech weapons fire rounds that penetrate walls and other types of cover. They also have an alternate fire mode that allows you to power up shots and deal more damage. It looks like there are several ways out of this room. Like those gates, for example. However, You'd have to be a skilled netrunner to hack into this terminal. Luckily, our engineering skills should allow us to disassemble that maintenance panel so we can get through the door. Got it. There are many skills right in the behind. game that players can apply in solving problems. The engineering skill can be used to fix, disassemble, and disarm the devices blocking the Production your line path. passes through here. And we're gonna pass through with it. So, from this point on, we're going to unlock the abilities of a high-end character to showcase some of the different mechanics we have in the game. One of the new weapon modules we now have installed is a ricochet targeting system connected to our eyes. This allows players to bounce bullets off walls and hit enemies hiding behind cover. This is another targeting system that will reveal enemies behind walls. Paired with the penetrating rounds of our tech shotgun, it's a deadly combination. Looks like we found some loot. This is a smart gun. It's one of the more advanced weapons in the game allowing bullets to track and follow their target. It's one of many different weapons players can acquire. Weapons are built of modules that allow for deep customization and progression. This way, you can be sure to find something that will suit your place. The toughest bastards guarding this route. Probably some reason for that. Motherfucker!
Just a reminder, everything you've seen and are about to see, including this particular feature we're about to show you, is from a work in progress version of the game and may change over the course of development. Okay, all exits covered. Okay, let's try something different. We're going to take this guy down and connect directly to his neural sign. In the world of Cyberpunk, once you are jacked into a network, you have access to everything it connects to. Through this Maelstrom gang member, we've now connected to the gang hideout's internal network. This is the building's personnel system. Let's focus on the squad containing the Maelstrom ganger we just connected to. From here, we can deploy software that affects the whole squad. For now, we'll simply unlock the ability to perform quick hacks. All right, time to show off our new high-level abilities. With Quick Hack, using the back door we unlocked a minute ago, we'll install a virus that jams the connection between the Maelstrom Ganger and his weapon. This will prevent him from firing. <laughs> ah, it's the hell is Looks Help like he's me. having a problem now. Nice. Some of you might recognize these mantis blades. We can also double jump and bounce off of walls, which makes us a very agile, fast solo. Sweet, we just found a corporate tech rifle. Corpo weapons are top of the line. Let's scan this guy and see what's going on. It looks like Royce is back, and he's prepped. He's got an armored exoskeleton. We won't be able to get rid of him that easily. Our weapons are not dealing a lot of damage because he's packing an autonomous shield. Luckily, the scan we performed earlier Let's revealed go. a weak spot. Ah! Attacking should bring the shield down. Shields down. Let's finish him off. Boy, it ain't going your way, you cunts. Okay, let's put him down and get this job over. That wasn't the smoothest raid, but we've got the bot, and Dex should be happy. But think back. What would have happened if we hadn't met with the Militech agent? or told Royce about the agent and her plans, or just decided to buy the bot ourselves. So many options, so many possibilities, and each will have consequences that will ripple through the game world and your story. And that's just one quest. Let's head out and finish the job. About goddamn time. Let's get out of here. work together more often. Your chip had the clap. That's not discreet. You set me up. I fucked you over. You fucked the gang over. Somewhere at the start of the story, somebody fucked the corp. See how this works now? Only the corp gets what it wants. Remember that. Learn it. Years down the line, you'll be standing where I am, watching somebody else doing... Yep. Being a raging bitch to whoever's doing my dirty work for me. It's time we were on our way, Ida. Okay, 
Let's call Dax and tell him how things went down. My girl eating suits. How's that looking? Hey, Mr. Dex. Get us that table at the afterlife? Hmm, matter of fact, I did. Just in my gut and all, you know. Well, you were right to. <laughs> well done, Mr. B. Well done. <laughs> See you there. Shit, I can't believe it, Ina. Major Leagues. We're in! <laughs> I mean, we fucking pried the door open. But the only thing I'm gonna pry open right now is a bottle of scotch. Oh no. Not another three-nighter. Por favor. Need to get to know this city, Jack. Not just gun in hand. I'm on a crusade. Amen, I know. We finished the job. But our story is just beginning. This concludes our gameplay demo walk. Thanks for watching. Hey V, you all right? Let's do this. You won't give out with this shit. Okay. What now? Barry. Johnny. You Barry? On a blanche. Where are we? Our BBS. Data Fortress. Bridge to the Deep Net. Beyond there are no borders. Beyond the Black Wall. Welcome to the Cyberpunk 2077 2019 Deep Dive video. In last year's gameplay reveal, we showed you our vision for the world of Cyberpunk 2077, its quests, and visual design. This year, we'd like to give you a peek at some of the playstyles you'll be able to adopt as your character progresses through the story. Here goes nothing. You're about to see sequences embodying two distinct approaches to playing Cyberpunk. We'll show you a strong solo build, that is, a character who focuses on employing blunt force and taking instant action. And a Netrunner build, a playstyle taking frequent advantage of stealth tactics, hacking, and battlefield control achieved using malicious software. Additionally, you'll learn more about Pacifica, one of the game's districts. Two gangs, the Animals and the Voodoo Boys. And you'll see glimpses of Johnny Silverhand, the digital construct who haunts our main character, V. A word of caution. Given that the video covers a section of the game deep into the main storyline, we have edited the footage to contain as few spoilers as possible. Be aware that the gameplay as presented does reveal characters and locations you'll see while playing the game's main story arc. So watch at your own discretion. Where are we headed? As Polaris' campaign promised, quote... This way. In this video, you'll experience a segment of a quest from the middle of the game. We're currently in Pacifica, one of Night City's six unique districts. No Pacifica, well. Nah. 
You guys aren't exactly great at rolling out the welcome mat for outsiders. It was designed to be a tourist hotspot within the city. As you can see, this didn't pan out. When uncertainty struck the global economy, investors pulled their funding, leaving most establishments unfinished. It's one of those places where expectations and reality collided, resulting in a heap of disappointment. Ongoing gang wars plague this part of the city. Outsiders don't come here if they don't have to. Even by Night City standards, it's dangerous to those unfamiliar with it. Taking a casual stroll here would not be a good idea. A fast motorbike or armor-plated car would be the safer option. But places like this have their advantages. If you're in need of rare goods or illegal cyberware, Pacifica's bustling local markets are a good place to start your search. The Grand Imperial Mall is a whole other story. It was one of the last developments in Pacifica to lose its funding. Until recently, it stood vacant, but now a gang called the Animals has moved in for reasons unknown. Something's not going right for the big guy up top. And that's what we need to learn in order to earn the trust of the Voodoo Boys, the Animals' rivals. What the hell? Could fucking tell me what you plan to do first. You take job. You do what I say. So you chuck in now. Of the many gangs in Cyberpunk 2077, the Voodoo Boys are the most skilled at using the net. I've now seen the Blizzard Hardwood on Subnet. Why? What for? You are my vessel now. Do Hardwood, I see what you see, hear what you hear. This mysterious gang of highly skilled netrunners has close ties to the local Haitian community. You are V? We have been waiting. Haitians settled in Pacifica in the 2060s after natural disasters struck their island and forced them to emigrate en masse. The Voodoo Boys gang formed around this same time, though at a smaller scale. Now the gang effectively rules Pacifica. The Voodoo Boys don't usually work with outsiders. Lucky for us, it seems they're prepared to make an exception this time. Mr. Hansen, you said you got murk work needs doing? Still, to earn their trust, we need to prove our worth. Placide, one of the Voodoo Boys higher-ups, has offered us a mission. We need to infiltrate the Grand Imperial Mall, currently occupied by the Voodoo Boys' deadly enemy, a gang called the Animals. 20, 35, 07. Three seconds before, poof, the camionette. We try to learn where the camionette come from. The Animals are not your normal gang. Their presence in Pacifica is suspicious. They value might above all else and wear melee combat implants to raise their prowess in combat. Their beverage of choice is juice, a potent strength and speed enhancing concoction. As sought after bouncers, they're usually dispersed throughout town. As skilled street level business types, they've cornered the market in illegal substances and underground live or die prize fights. When they converge in one spot, it's for something big. It's then they appoint the fastest and strongest among them as their ad hoc leader. In this case, it's a woman named Sasquatch. Said you wanted my bet. No. As far as I remember, you said no bone brain buffaloes on steroids. I'm afraid that's the cost of doing biz. This is the tech Placide was talking about. It seems non-standard for the animals. And this is where we come in. Getting to the van won't be easy, but we're more than qualified for the job, which we can complete in one of many ways. The character creation in Cyberpunk 2077 is the kind you'd expect from a full-fledged RPG. You start by choosing your past, important because this unlocks special options at important story junctures. You also fully customize your character using a deep customization system that spans not only your look and style, but also your abilities. Cyberpunk 2077 does not feature fixed classes. Instead, it has a fluid class system that allows players to mix and match a wide range of abilities to suit their playstyles. You can create a strong solo character, a skilled netrunner, or any other hybrid class you can imagine. Let's see how a solo playstyle in Cyberpunk 2077 might work. Solos prefer a direct approach. They use guns and might to get things done. So let's wreak some havoc. 
With our enhanced strength, we can strip this turret of its weapon to give the animals a taste of their own medicine. This is how a player investing in solo abilities might live out their Terminator power fantasy. Enhanced strength lets us force open doors or grab enemies to use as human shields. We also gain access to powerful melee combat cyberware. So even someone as fast and strong as Sasquatch, the leader of this group of animals, is not impossible to beat for a solo. But Sasquatch has a different game plan. She's out to jack in and hack us. Let's see how this plays out. Ready for some fun? Oh, Proceed. What's going on? It's our choice if we want to finish her off or spare her. Your cyberpunk, your rules. If you'd rather sneak around, hide, and strike from the shadows, no problem. Just develop your net running skills to get around obstacles or hack into enemy tech to have it do the dirty work for you. Net running abilities mean hacking skills that let us use our cyber deck to breach access points. For this, we fill the buffer of our cyber deck with a string of instructions represented by these letters and numbers. Matching the instructions for basic access grants us control of devices connected to this network. The more instructions we match, the more control we gain over elements in the network. We can hack our way through in numerous ways. A quick hack may grant us control of the security camera. Another one should let us tweak the difficulty of the training bot to create a distraction. With our nanowire, we can even hack this guy's implants from a distance. In this world, almost everything is connected to a local network. And that means it can be hacked. Ours is a wolf. Which brings us back to cyberspace. You don't get to do anything in the net unnoticed. There's always someone watching. It could be Corpos, or even worse, it could be Netwatch. And that is exactly the case here. Who is they? Netwatch. They always have to fuck us. Netwatch and the Voodoo Boys are like fire and ice. The first of these wants to maintain the old order and protect people from AI anarchy originating from beyond the Black Wall. The Voodoo Boys want to establish contact with the free AIs. They believe this will enable their boundless expansion on the net and grant them the upper hand over Netwatch. Netwatch sees this as the end of the world. Both are right. Whoa, hey. How you deal with the Netwatch agent is entirely up to you. Do we side with the gang? Choosing to be on Netwatch's bad side is never wise. But can we really trust the Voodoo Boys? You set me up! As you can see, we have many possible options. But in each case, we take a risk. I think I'll just stick to my point. In the world of cyberpunk, few things go as planned. And that was just a glimpse of how complex the branching storyline in Cyberpunk 2077 can get. Every decision you make will have consequences. Your choices will shape how the world reacts to you and affect your relationships with those around you. One of those relationships is special. 
Ever heard of Johnny Silverhand, a rebel rocker boy who will be your companion throughout your adventure in Night City? Come on, really think they give a rat's dick how you look? Like everyone in Cyberpunk 2077, he has his own agenda. You'll decide if he'll be your ally or your enemy. And that chip in your head, the one thanks to which Johnny lives inside your mind. Well, that's a story for another time.